I pray God's blessings upon your life. I pray his supernatural strength in your life. I pray God's divine wisdom so that you can know what to do in your life. I pray God's healing anointing be released and stirred in your body and that he'll use your hands to heal. I pray that what God starts in my life, that he'll finish with a double anointing in your life, that it gets stronger in the body as it comes down. So the very thing that was on Moses also came on the people, and there was not one feeble one among them. There was not one feeble one among them. You'll find older individuals stumbling so often. They stumble and they fall and they end up having a, a fall. They get out of bed and they fall down. They stumble here. They get dizzy here. They fall and they don't have enough strength to catch themselves. And so it, it's because their physical body has been neglected for such a long time. So I, I want to submit to you three different things that contributed to the remarkable health of, of Moses and the, all of the children of Israel who came out to the degree that there was not one feeble among, one among them. We have attributed that when we, some folks have heard that, as though this was just God's incredible miraculous grace over them. And I do think that that was a part of it. I really do think that that was a part of it. But I also want to look at these natural things that I believe that they did that helped to contribute toward that. Number one is rest rest because remember God was a pillar of cloud by day but he was a pillar of fire by night he was a pillar of fire to them by night and remember the cloud of God's glory it would move and then it would stop and sometimes it would stay camped at places for several days maybe a week maybe weeks and it would just stay there and God would just rest the people so the people were rested. They were not hurried. They were not hurried in their life. Let me just say this to you, that when life speeds up, the people of God need to slow down. You need to slow down so that you can strategize, so that you can get your bearings, so that you can take your divine Sabbath. When the world gives you more and more opportunities of different things to go uh, and do, uh, you need to slow down. It is the devil's strategy to keep you so busy on your feet that you don't have time to take a Sabbath, that you don't have time for God. And we've got all of these modern conveniences, time savers of electric this, automatic that, instant this, and then we have less and less time than we've ever had than it appears any generation that has ever lived. And we're always in a rush. We get in traffic and, and, and we're, we're rushing, going back and forth rushing 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 and we are stressed out by all of this stuff that we have to do God rested his people he rested them he would just let the cloud stop and when God stopped the cloud all of the children of Israel had to stop you will be surprised how much better you can rest if you will write things down that are weighing on your mind when you get ready to go to bed and don't let the news be the last thing that you look at before when you go to bed you don't rest well when you've got stuff about murders and rapes and, and uh, foreclosures and you know and the broken water main pipes and traffic accidents and all of this negative news churning in you all night why would you want to see that as the last thing before you close your eyes to be meditating that on and churning and going over in your spirit all night long don't go with the, to bed with that if you're gonna look at the news listen after you turn that off sit up in the bed and read some scripture wash your mind with the Word of God with the water of the word quote some scripture meditate on something that is positive and lofty so that you can rest it is so possible to be in a restful bed and still be restless sleep does not always equal rest please understand that sleep does not always equal rest if you don't get sufficient rest you will break your resistance down your immune system is impaired if your body is physically exhausted. And let me just tell you this. Your body is only, hear me carefully, your body is only as rested as your mind. If your mind is tired, you're tired. You can sleep all night long, and if your mind is tired, you will wake up tired the next morning. Anybody ever... <laughs> awakened in the morning and you were just tired just dragging you felt like a a, 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 a Mack truck had run over you 
and you wake up in the morning just as tired if not tired than when you went to bed it's because you were wrestling with stuff in the night and you didn't even realize you were not you were asleep but you weren't resting and so God gives his his beloved a, a, a rest there's a Sabbath rest of God that is necessary for us to actually have good health here's the second key I told you there are three things I believe that they had the second thing the first one was rest the second one is exercise exercise now notice the children of Israel they walked all day every day they got huge amounts of exercise now here's a key I'm getting ready to say something really profound really deep you have to touch yourself and say boy, boy Bishop is deep tonight Bishop that was deep if you want to keep moving you have to keep moving now the older that you get you'll understand what that means anybody with gray hair around here that can under, can attest to that I mean if if you want to keep moving you, you have to keep moving I, I would notice certain old folks they, they'd be sitting down for a spell and uh, and stuff would start stiffening them up stiffening them up on you I mean you look like rigor mortis starts setting in <laughs> and and they get ready to to get up and, and they, they, they make grunts, you know, my, my grandmama would say, ouch, like it was as though it was hurting her. But they, they, they'd make sounds after they'd been sitting for a while when it came time to change their position and then get up. Because if you want to keep moving, you have to keep moving. You have to keep moving. So God kept the children of Israel moving every day. They, they were out, they were walking. They were moving. So they had the greatest exercise. They weren't riding on electric carts. <laughs> you know, they didn't have any motorcycles. Uh, they didn't have any flatbed trucks, you know. They, they, they just they didn't have anything. They had manual labor. I mean, and just think about how manual their lifestyles were. They didn't have any automatic dishwashers, washing machines, dryers. No, no, no. They had to wash stuff by hand. They had to hang it and dry it out, you know. So they had to do everything. Their lives were totally manual. They were exercising every day. Just the routine of their life was manual exercise. Kept them in tip-top great shape. So if you want to keep moving, you have to keep moving. A sedentary lifestyle is one of the fastest ways to deteriorate your health. Now I want you to notice this. I'd make a note of this if I were you. Champions are motivated by their dreams but they are made by their routine champions are motivated by their dream but they are made by their routine by their routine success is always found in the daily agenda it is found in your routine if you look at your life right now in what you are doing each day what constitutes what you do today and extrapolate that out for five years and say if I am doing the same thing every day that I'm doing these days where will I be in five years am I on the right track am I doing the right things that will lead me to progress to growth to development five years down the road ask yourself those questions and if not you need to ask yourself the question what is it that I need to change in order to help me to get to where I'm going or where I'm trying to go in, f in five years. I mean, just, just imagine, you know, if you were going to drive from Georgia over to California, that you've got to realize how many miles that is. I mean, you can do a map quest and see how many miles it is. Then you'll figure out if you're going to drive that exactly how many miles that you need to travel per day in order to get there within your allotted time. You're going to see how many days it's going to take you with my driving X amount of hours let me see how do I pace myself for this journey and if you're not making the right amount of steps or mileage on your in your daily routine you're deceiving yourself about where you might want to be down the road so they are the dreams of champions that motivate them but uh, it's their routine that actually makes them it's so interesting because nowadays we are learning the importance of health and exercise 
uh, to be able to be better fit at a longer uh, lifespan. So uh, this is why you hear now that 70 is the new 50 and 50 is the new 30. You know why? Because we finally have learned that you've got to exercise and keep moving yourself if you want to keep moving and that you've got to take supplements and that you've got to do this, that, and the other. You've got to cut this out of your diet. So we've realized that we've got to take better care of ourselves and so people are living healthier for longer periods of time now because they've learned how to take better care. So the generation that's on the scene now, the older generation abused their bodies. They didn't know any better. And they saw their grandparents getting old. You know, years ago, 40 was old. See, our health in America has improved drastically over the years. One of the reasons that 40 was old a long time ago is because so many people died in their 40s and 50s. They died. In, and so the lifespan has increased over time because of, of better medications, uh, a better care of, 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 uh, of things, better diets, and, and things of that nature. So we, we've learned some things that actually help us to live healthier for longer periods of time. So we've got another generation, folks who are in the 70s now, they're out walking and exercising and doing different things and, and trying to monitor their health and go to bed on time and, you know, early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. So they're employing some of these things because they realize that it, 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 it benefits them. They feel better. And so it makes them even more productive. And so if you don't do anything else, a bare minimum of just walking at least 30 minutes per day. And in fact, years ago, uh, I was with the president of the American Heart Association and, uh, for a health convention, and, and he had us, I uh, spent a whole week there with him at a hotel that he owned, and uh, he had us getting up every day. We walked for 20 to 30 minutes twice per day, twice per day. And uh, the, the, the real thing that I really loved about it is that he fed us seven times a day. Oh, my goodness. It was interesting. I was underweight at the time. I, I gained five pounds. My mother was a bit overweight at the time. She's never been a big woman, but she was maybe, I don't know, 10, 10 pounds overweight. And so she lost five pounds. I gained five pounds. We were eating the same food seven times a day. Every time I turned around, it was time to eat, but it was okay with me because you got to eat. Do whatever you can do because we are placed now with some individuals that are, that are challenged in, in, in their weight issues because we have such a sedentary society sitting in front of computers playing video games instead of real games. I mean, when I was growing up, you didn't play basketball and football on the computer. We didn't have computers. You, you had to get out in the street and play in the backyard and parks and all of these kinds of things. So uh, you need to walk, you need to jog, you need to skate, you need to play sports, you need to do strength training, uh, whatever, but to, to get your body moving so that you exercise. You exercise. Here's a third key to Israel's amazing health. Not only the rest that they had, not only the exercise that they had, and, and, and just, um, I, I'm calling all, all three of these uh, RED, R-E-D. The other one is diet, rest, exercise, and diet. Red, rest, exercise, and diet. They had an amazing diet, an amazing diet. Now, remember that God supplied their diet with this manna, which was like a coriander seed. Uh, and it came down, and it was sort of like a wafer, and they, they, it had a sweetness to it. And uh, that was nutritional value. It was the bread of heaven, which is a staple of so many diets. But your nutrition and your supplements are very, very important. As you age, your body does not absorb vitamins and minerals as well as it did when you were younger. And so that's why you have to take supplements as you age. And particularly because we have uh, the vitamin and, and uh, minerally deficient foods because of not allowing the, the soil to, to rest. You know, God gave Israel uh, particular instructions about planting the, the vineyards, all of the, their farmland, for six years, the seventh year it was supposed to rest. 
And, you know, we've learned things about being able to rotate the crops because different crops pull different things out of the soil, and you can deplete things out of the soil in a certain area if you keep the same things planted there all the time. So if you rotate them, then potatoes don't pull the same thing out of the soil as squash. And so you, you rotate them, and then you can, you can still use the soil. And so we've learned some different ways to be able to do that. But nutrition and, and uh, supplement are very important. So you've got rest. You have to rest yourself. You have to exercise and take care of your diet. All of these are common sense things. These are common sense. That's, I'll tell you, there's no big secret about it. It's simply common sense. If you'll notice this, because sometimes we have over-spiritualized things to fail to see the natural things that were happening. In Psalm 103 and verse 5, it, it, notice what it talks about. Uh, not only did it talk about in verse 3 about God who forgiveth all of thine iniquities, who uh, redeems your life from destruction. He healeth all of your diseases. That's what verse 103 and verse 3 talks about. But then 103 and verse 5 says this, who satisfies your mouth with good things. He's who satisfies your mouth with good things. Where do you put food? In your mouth. He's who satisfies your mouth with good things. And for what purpose? So that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Don't neglect satisfying your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. You don't just want to look young, you want to feel young. You are as young as you feel. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what you look like, it matters what you feel like. Third John verse 2, I wish therefore brethren above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. This is the balance that we're talking about because we want you to live a long time. We want you to be healthy. We want you to be energetic. It takes health and energy to realize your dream. You don't want to be slowed down. And the, the way that sickness will drain your money, your courage, your energy, and your time, it's a real robber. It's a thief. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were better. Those guys had a different diet. They requested specifically not to eat the same as the other folks that they had. He says, take away the sweet delicacies of the king and the meat and just give us a vegetarian diet and, and then test us after 10 days. And they did so, and those boys were better in every category. They beat them because they had a natural diet, not only because they had a God, but it's because of what you do differently. If you've got the same God, you know, and, and, uh, or a different God than everybody else, but you're doing the same thing that everybody else is doing, you're generally going to get the same results. It is what you do differently that actually makes you different. It's what you do differently that makes you different. And so take care of your temple. Take care of your temple. I was in the gym at 5 o'clock this morning. I'm not telling you to do something that I'm not willing to do myself because I don't want you to be in the hospital and crippled up, you know, laying out with a stroke and heart attack and all of this kind of stuff, you know, because I was taking on too much and I got so busy that I didn't have time to take care of the temple. I thought about delegating and I, I, I delegated for a while and said, why don't you go and work out for me today? <laughs> I see people, you know, in that workout clothes, I said, run a mile for me. But you know what? They were getting all of the benefit. So you can't delegate the taking care of your physical body. And when you take the time to do that, what an incredible testimony and light that we can become to the world if everybody, if there were no sick people or feeble among us here at Word of Faith. Do you imagine that people would want to come here and become members of the church and figure out what is it that those people are doing that their lives are actually healthy and there's nobody sick over there? Isn't that amazing that out of nearly two million Israelite people that there was not one feeble one among them? And Moses was 120 years old and his vision was not dim, neither was his natural force abated or diminished in any capacity. And so I pray that you would just allow God to invigorate you. I dare you to do some things with your body that you have not done before.
I dare you to set some physical goals, to get up and to exercise in the morning. I dare you to begin to set some goals for your life and start eating better. You already know some of the things that you can do that will make you better. I dare you to just act on the knowledge that is already in your head. I dare you. I dare you. Thank you for watching Power for Living with Bishop Dale C. Bronner. Until next time, God bless you.